If your body's hurting, you may want to watch this video. Hello, I am John, as you know. I have with me Renee Ostertag. Hello, yes. She just gave a talk at the South Central section of the American Urologic Association meeting in beautiful Colorado Springs, Colorado. We, we were not talking about clinical aspects of urology, but she gave a very impactful talk on how to keep the surgeon's body fit and healthy. And this, her presentation does not apply to just surgeons, but I think everybody. So I, I want Renee to give us, give you a couple of take-home messages regarding how to keep your body working better in our very connected society where everybody's busy. Absolutely. Yes. Here's the deal. We live in a flexion biased society. That means your head will be forward and then you have to tip up to look like this. So that's a lot of forward load on your cervical spine structures. Because we're always looking at our phones like this. Yes. And if we live like that, we essentially create a like an immobilization cast effect. Like if you have your um, arm casted from a broken bone, when you take the cast off, everything's really stiff and tight and atrophied. The same thing happens in this part of our neck. And so we can correct that with some really simple, easy exercises. And who doesn't have neck pain, right? It just seems like we're constantly on our phones or for a lot of us, notebook computers. We're constantly looking down like this. Yes. If you have a screen of any kind, laptop, desktop, um, cell phone, like you are subject to this condition, which creates a lot of cervical strain problems. And for my surgeon friends, or actually any physician, because we're constantly working in our electronic health records, looking down at a screen. And for our urologists and, and other surgeons, we are in the operating room. We are physically doing this, working on somebody. So this is going to be impactful for physicians as well as everybody regarding your back health and shoulder health and neck health. Yes, definitely. Okay, so you gave us a couple of suggestions in your presentation today on how to improve our neck health. Why don't you share with our audience what we can do? I did. Number one tool is called neck retraction. It is an exercise that has a ton of evidence to show that it helps reduce bulging discs and reduce pain and keep people out of the operating room. So here's the deal. You're going to do the sexiest exercise ever. You will get at least two, if not three, chins from this. That's normal. And during your presentation, the whole audience did it. Yes, everybody in the audience. And I had them measure before and after. So they checked their range of motion before and after the exercises. And I just had a look at the results. Every single person had better range of motion with less pain after doing this I, I had improvement. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Are you ready for the exercise? Yes, ready. Okay. Neck retraction. So you want to recruit your optimal posture, sit as tall as you can, let your head be like a balloon. And then all you do is bring your head straight backwards. Give yourself two or three chins, stay long at the back of your neck, and come forward. You're keeping your eye gaze straight forward towards the middle, and it's a backward movement. And what you're doing with your neck as you do this retraction is you're restoring mobility and blood flow and circulation and happy hormone chemicals to all of these tissues that get stuck in a toxic neurochemical chaos bath that is ripe for pain to, to be born. And believe it or not, when I did the exercise during her presentation, I, my neck did not hurt, but my chest was hurting because I was so retracted this way. So when I stretched out my neck, I was hurting on my chest, which is amazing. Yes, so I wanna talk about injury pain versus productive pain. If you have pain when you do this, it is fair game to have pain anywhere at the back of the neck, even up into the head and face. It can come down the front of the chest, out to the side of the shoulders, down the back of the upper back. But if the pain goes away, pretty much immediately, that is productive pain. That's actually pain that you wanna work into to restore that mobility because the number one risk factor for pain is lack of range of motion. So if you don't have it. full range of motion, you are more at risk to have problems in that area. Okay, so you've shown the audience how to perform this exercise. Yes. How frequently should we be doing it? Yes, every, well, it depends. If ideally. You, yes, ideally, uh, twice a day, like you brush your teeth. 
So twice a day, morning and evening. For most of us who brush our teeth. Most of us who brush our teeth. (laughs) Hopefully most days. I think I did this morning. Yes. Okay. Got it. If you are living in a world where you're doing more flexion, think of it like a bank account balance. If you're doing more flexion than extension, you're going to go broke at some point in time. So if you're doing some extensive procedures or you're sitting at your computer for a while or you've been on your phone for a while, it's really, um, once you get into the habit, it's easy to just balance it out and go the other way. You can even push back a little bit. You can do repeated movements and, and just go for a one count and hold for like five, uh, so one second hold, five to ten reps, or you can just go back and hold for like five, ten seconds. And just let things click and find themselves back into place, yeah. if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it depends on if you're in pain, if you're preventing, if you're in maintenance every one to two hours, if you're in a severe acute episode of pain, or twice a day for maintenance. And then just using it strategically is really helpful for people. If you're in a lot of flexion, go back and do some extension to just keep your bank account balance happy. And the other thing that you mentioned during your presentation is that it doesn't really take that long, but once you start doing it, it becomes a habit. Yes. So part of the talk was, because it's to surgeons, I said every 20 minutes, and I have worked with a lot of surgeons, and this keeps them out of pain during long OR days. Or not just long OR days, even afterwards. Right. Right. And just to not have neck pain at the end of your day is an amazing gift. And you can give that to yourself. And that's the biggest thing, is that you can change your own muscles. You can change how you hold your body to change your entire life experience because you feel better in your body. When you don't feel good in your body, you're a miserable person to be around for everybody, most especially yourself, and life's not fun. And 100%, a lot of people take out that aggression on other people around them, which is not good, especially for surgeons. Yes. People tend to get the fallout from our crabbiness. Yes, yeah, irritability is contagious for sure. You also showed that you had one, is it optometrist, optometrist or ophthalmologist who, yes. who implemented uh, these stretching exercises intraoperatively? Yes. Thanks for bringing that back. So every 20 minutes. What does he do? He does neck retraction and or thoracic extension. Now, if he's in operating room, you have to be sterile. So he just keeps his hands here and he... he going to just arch his back, right? So he's, he's thoracically extending. He's opening up his chest to the sun. Every 10, 20 minutes, he has a nurse keep a timer. And then when that timer goes off, everybody in the OR takes a break. Anesthesiologists, nurses, other assists, everybody. They take a 10 second stretch bake. And maybe they shake and shift their body or just move a little bit or they do the retraction or thoracic extension. But he says it's changed the entire mood of the operating room and everybody's happier and having more fun because they're moving a little bit. And like movement is medicine and bodies love novel diverse input. And so the more you just shake up your body from your stagnant positions of whatever you're doing all day, like you're just literally tapping into the medicine chest of your own brain. And those happy hormones are 50 times more powerful than any drug on the market. Phenomenal. So I I think I'm going to start implementing that if I can remember it and maybe find an app that has a 20 minute timer. Mm-hmm. So that it'll remind me, and then I'll I'll start stopping the case in the mid, in, in the middle of it, and just have everybody take ten seconds, which is not really that long. Yes. But it, a lot of it, like you said during the presentation, a lot of it is just habit. We're we're currently so habitually looking be looking down like this in our on our devices. If we can just change the dynamic a little bit, I think we're going to be a lot healthier and a lot happier, not just for us, but the the people around us as well. Yes, absolutely. The The habit change is the hardest part. And what's even harder is having uh, neck pain, having miserable relationships and needing to retire early because your neck hurts or having surgery. So the habit change is the hardest part. And once you do it, it literally takes less than 30 seconds. All right. So for I, I did not introduce what she does. Renee is actually a physical therapist. Yes. And, doctorate of physical therapy in Denver, Colorado. And so she's here locally, but she works with physicians and other clients 
virtually. Around the country, a, yes. Around the country. So yeah. I will put in the video description her contact information and where you can reach her. And thank you all so, so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.